Thank you, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. It's a pleasure to contribute in this debate, and it's uh, a pleasure to be here with my uh, honourable friend and neighbour, the member for South Dorset, because we are here, Mr Deputy Speaker, today to represent and make sure that the Government take on board the priority of Dorset, and particularly for me as the member for West Dorset. Mr Deputy Speaker, I was uh, looking through this uh, Revenue Support Grant spreadsheet uh, the other day when we had the announcement of the Revenue Support Grant, and I was busy looking for Dorset in it, but regrettably I did not see it. And I thought it was an error, but regrettably Dorset does not feature in the Revenue Support Grant. My neighbouring colleagues and I have been looking to meet with the Secretary of State for a little while now, and I'm very grateful that there's a, a bit of a flurry of action, and we'll hopefully have that meeting very soon. But I would just like to say how disappointed I think we are that after the draft of uh, the finance settlement was put forward, um, despite my colleagues and I hoping to meet with uh, ministers and indeed the Secretary of State, that we've not been able to do so just yet to be able to make that case on behalf of the residents, not just of West Dorset, but of the wider uh, Dorset Council area. Um, I would just like to uh, also uh, say, Mr Deputy Speaker, um, Dorset is an area that, if the last time I had a look, uh, we have the second highest council tax in the country at Bandy level. £2,233 for a Bandy property before any discounts but a revenue support grant of zero. Wandsworth, Bandy, council tax, £845 per annum, yet a revenue support grant of £24.3 million. Dorset, 30% of the population over 65 years old, with all the associated social care costs and difficulties and challenges that go with it, Wandsworth, 10% of the population over 65. London receives ten times amount per passenger journey what we do in Dorset to support local transport and bus services. And indeed, only more recently, we, we, we hear billions of pounds, more money going to support uh, TfL, yet we are struggling in Dorset to run a bus service. In Dorset, Mr Deputy Speaker, we have the worst frequency rail line in the country. I was looking through, um, I was looking through this wonderful levelling up document, which is very good, and I have to commend uh, this document. I, I have to commend the document to the House because I think it is very good indeed. It contains a lot of excellent initiatives for the country. Regrettably, there's not much in there for Dorset. And I would just like to say to the uh, uh, Secretary of State, we should be very grateful if he might consider the letter which the leader of the council sent him just a, a week or two ago to help us with this issue. Um, particularly in terms of the local plan, that would be much appreciated, and any influence he might bring to bear uh, ahead of a future uh, contract that is going to be signed with the DFT and one of the local railway companies for a further six-year um, uh, contract to operate the worst frequency rail line in the country would actually be much welcomed, I think it's fair to say, to feature within uh, future levelling up, uh, levelling up plans. I think I should just like to conclude, because I know my honourable friend and neighbour would also like to contribute in this debate, and I don't want to uh, take away any of, his, uh, any of his thunder. But the point I would just like to make, again, to the House, Mr Deputy Speaker, is that whilst the perception from many in the House is that Dorset is a well-off uh, community, that it's a, a, a chocolate box uh, uh, style uh, area with plenty of lovely thatched houses, we have more than our fair share of difficulties. The Conservative-led Dorset Council has done an excellent job with, with uh, managing those difficulties over the last couple of years, and, and I think it's fair to say that we are very grateful to his department for many of the uh, uh, things that uh, have happened in recent times. I particularly welcome the fact that the uh, Dorset LEP, uh, I understand, is under review. We would be very grateful if that could be uh, expedited imminently, because I know they're, they're going to run out of money to operate quite soon. As he knows, I'm a clear advocate of change, uh, because I don't think it's delivered much. And I think, actually, the effectiveness of the LEP is an indicator of how much or little uh, there may be in the levelling up plan itself to benefit rural Dorset. So um, I should just uh, say to my right honourable friend that um, I will be supporting his motion today. I understand that he's had many difficult things to navigate. 
But I would just like to clearly put on record that it is not acceptable for us going forward as, an, as uh, Dorset MPs, and particularly me for the member of rural West Dorset, that we continue, continually end in this place where we have some of the highest council tax in the country with zero revenue support grant compared to others that have some of the lowest council tax in the country with considerable millions of pounds to support them. Thank you. Clive Betts. Uh, thank you, 